Welcome to episode four of Real Estate Talk with Randy Steadwell. I am happy to uh, bring you guys and announce this guy named Nick Bastinelli. Um, Awesome guy. I actually met him for the very first time a few weeks ago at his event. And I asked him to come on here to talk about uh, everything that we're about to talk about. He's a agent. Um, you know, he, he does short term rentals. He does some long term rentals, I believe. Um, we're going to get into all of that and what he thinks the state of the market is and where we should be going. So, uh, without further ado, I want to bring up Nick Bassinelli. How you doing, Nick? What's up, Randy? Doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing awesome. By the way, your event was awesome. So I I appreciate it. Really happy to be there. Um, So, but yeah, so tell, tell me, tell the audience a little bit, a little bit more about you. And uh, so I know we had a little bit of a bio for you and we got that in the description. If you want to read that by all means, but just a little, just a little brief summary of who you are, what you do and and kind of go from there. Yeah. So I'm Nick Bastinelli. I'm a local real estate broker here in Southeast Michigan. So I live in Northville, grew up in Novi. Um, I owned gyms. My wife and I opened gyms uh, when we were pretty young. So I was 23. She was 19. I think we made the LLC and she turned 20 when we opened. So anyway, spent entrepreneurial my whole life. Um, Ran those gyms, was totally not planning on getting in real estate at all. Um, I just had a mentor, uh, a mentor kind of in life and in business. Um, for a long time who owned a boutique brokerage in downtown Rochester. Um, mm-hmm. I had a lot of respect for him and um, he had a, you know, a great life. I think he still does. I'm sure he still does. Yeah. Um, a life that, that I admire. Um, and so, yeah, he owned that brokerage and he asked me to come work for him. And I was pretty okay. hesitant. This conversation was, it went on for a long period of time. Uh, and then he offered to basically like cover the cost. I think he, covered the cost of my course for sure. And maybe the test as well. And so I figured I'll just go for it. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, so I got into real estate and then that snowballed. We ended up selling our gyms or prepping our Mm -hmm. gyms for sale pretty quickly selling them. I went full time in real estate, stacked as much cash as I could on the side and then started buying a bunch of short term rentals within the last like 10 months. So yeah, I I love that. That's awesome. (laughs) That's awesome. So uh, that actually kind of, you know, a li- talks a little bit about how you got into real estate as well. Um, uh-huh. So, um, you know, what were your fears about getting into real estate? So did you have any? Oh, uh, yeah, no, I totally did. I was super ap- apprehensive. Um, the gyms were super fulfilling, um, but they just, we, they weren't like super financially rewarding for us. Um, okay. We started really young. We didn't know. I think about it all the time, I wonder. How I would do in the business nowadays, knowing what I know now. Um, but yeah, I was pretty apprehensive to get in real estate um, because I was like, I really enjoyed the stuff we were doing. Um, right. And, you know, although I'm very entrepreneurial, um, I have a lot of friends who have really wonderful jobs. And, yeah. um, and so I thought, man, I'm going to go from running these gyms and being fully responsible for my income and benefits and healthcare to jumping into a brand new industry, real estate, where it's a hundred percent commission and I still got to do my healthcare and benefits. So my kids were really young. I was super apprehensive, dude. I I really didn't, I did not pay any attention to real estate for like the first at least five months that I had a license and then a good friend of mine. Yeah, I did. I literally did nothing at all. And then I had a good buddy of mine, blonde one of the kids, who asked me to help him buy his first house. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm very grateful that Nick trusted me to do that, and that was really it. So that first house, was that, I was super apprehensive, dude. Yeah, yeah. So that's awesome because the thing is, is that there's a lot of newbies out there, a lot of newbies in this group that we do, and, and we reach out that you know they're they're afraid to make that leap. And I'm not sitting yeah. here saying quit your job and and go get into real estate. No, I'm not saying that do everything methodically. Like I fully believe in, you know, testing things to make sure that they work before you jump full heartedly in it. You know, um, that's me. That's my methodical brain going. Um, and so I always believe in that, but 
dude, I'm going to tell you, if, if I had a, like, I have a wife, but if I had kids as well, the little ones and dude, they're to so do little. that, oh my <laughs> God, I, I, I mean, what I do. Dude, it's got help, right? I mean, we were like totally not, <laughs> we were not making any money. So like, I did have a very low, low um, level of, of success I needed to achieve in order to be doing better than I was financially beforehand. The big gotcha. thing for us was, I guess it was so, we were, it was very fulfilling. It was so nice for our kids to be in a gym every day, like building their own, you know, like, whatever obstacle course and stuff so yeah yeah it was a, it was a risk man i get I, i'm in the same boat i do right like you know a lot of people call i have people call me every week about becoming a real estate agent and i'm really transparent yeah. with them about you know what it takes to be successful in the industry and i understand right. that people have families and they can't you know all just like go all in on day one so you know you gotta do what you gotta exactly. do but it's been one i mean it literally has absolutely <laughs> changed our lives for the better so i definitely think it's worth a shot and and that's the great thing because the thing is is that you gotta at least love what you're doing if yeah. you don't like what you're doing there's no point of doing it okay yeah so Agreed. especially real estate right it's challenging yeah. we have to have tough conversations there's a good amount of money involved it's mm -hmm. not always comfortable there's a lot of action which must be taken on a very regular basis in order to be successful so yeah you gotta like it somewhat for sure exactly no 100 yeah. percent. so yeah. with that being said like what was your so you said your your first five months that you you basically made nothing right and it wasn't yeah, totally yeah <laughs> so it wasn't until you know you got your first now after after you got your first paycheck from doing yes. those first deals like how did that feel incredible that was it man that was the that was the light not getting the license yeah. so i got licensed in june june something like june 18th of 2018 Mm -hmm. And then my first sale closed, like, um, I don't remember, November 30th or something. So it was actually like five and a half months. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So I don't know when we started seeing houses. That was probably a month or two. But anyways, um, yeah, I, really transparently. And I was on a 50-50 split with a big cap, you know, for those people who are okay. familiar with like the sale side. Um, and I still showed up to close. I think the house was 224 or something like that. I showed up to close. I was only getting paid 50% of it. And I still looked at that and thought, holy shit, <laughs> dude. Right. This is why, I mean, I worked really hard for that, very hard for that first deal. But even so, I was making yeah. $400 a week <laughs> transitioning to getting a paycheck for a couple of grand. And I was just like, this I, is it. We got to do it. Weird. We got to go all in. Yeah. And that's weird. You're only making $400 a week and you own the gyms. Yeah. I owned two of the, uh, yeah, honestly, probably my wife and I were each making 400 a week. I think our best year we made like 52 combined or something. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It was not a lot. Like people thought we were like, yeah. well, you're owning profit gyms and, um, you know, my, my whole life has been very important to me to be good and like prioritize relationships yep. over, I always prioritize relationships over cash or income. And right. so we had staff who fully operated our one location in Ferndale and they were awesome. One on a salary and then another mm -hmm. woman who was awesome, you know, just per class, like 1099. Right. And then our other gym had full staff too. So, you know, we weren't like coaching all day, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that would probably is going to be mind blowing if anybody knows me here's that yeah. that's what we made back then that was my best year yeah so that was uh so your first deal i mean that's yes. more so of a proof of concept than anything else it really didn't matter about the money it was uh, more even even though it was a lot of money for you because it was cool money. yeah <laughs> but yeah, yeah. it was more of a proof of i'm on the right track right <laughs> yes you totally know? yeah so, it was wild man it was very cool so when did you get into rentals and figure out the short term versus the long term versus the mid term and so on sure. and so forth? Yeah, so I, we had racked up a pretty good amount of personal debt from running, like building out those gyms and stuff. <clears throat> and so when I got into real estate, I got that first paycheck and thought, okay, there's a lot of potential here. So my wife and I started talking about closing down those, like prepping the gyms for sale really, like getting them off the books so that I could yep. get into real estate full time as quickly as possible. But that was a, a, I mean, I guess it's probably important for your audience in particular. <clears throat> that took time, right? 
So I was running two gyms with two infants. I had to prep them slowly taper off. Um, yep. And then, um, man, I totally lost my train of thought there. What was the thing you just asked me? Oh, how did I get in rentals? Okay. So what I knew is like, okay, I have, I have this debt, which I have to take care of and be a responsible adult, right? This is like dragging me and my family down. So what I did is I decided to go all in and focus on one thing, which is real estate yep. sales and real estate sales only, right? Mm -hmm. I know this thing just paid me $3,000 and that is the biggest paycheck I've ever seen other than mm -hmm. whatever, selling it, probably yeah, selling yeah. my first house or something. Um, and so I thought, okay, I'm only focusing on real estate sales and I'm pretty entrepreneurial. So it's easy. It was really easy at that point in my life to have like shiny object syndrome. But all I did gotcha. is think every day, I'm only focusing on real estate sales. This is paying me mm -hmm. and it doesn't cost me anything other than time and effort, which is all I really had then. So I worked right. really hard and I started off by paying myself like really low. I can't remember what it was. I think I started by taking every paycheck, 20% to debt, 20% to investments, 20% to taxes, and then maybe I probably started living off 40% expenses, right? Okay. And then, right, so I'm saving, oh, and then 20%, yeah, like pre-saving for investments essentially. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so whatever, I probably started at 40%, I worked my way down to 20%. And so our family, you know, I'm paying off 20% debt every time, <laughs> pre-saving for taxes, all these things are getting taken care of. My life is not changing that much in the way that I live. And I'm starting to like accumulate some cash, right? That's going down, right, cash right, yep. going up. And I start. I knew from the beginning that real estate investment was wildly interesting to me. So mm -hmm. I, I thought that was the, the end game. Like I thought this is where you really want to go if you yep. want to get wealthy long term, right? I knew that I was in the rent race and like on the hamster wheel of commissions, and I couldn't do it forever. Mm -hmm. So I read every single free ebook that Bigger Pockets had. I bought a, a ton of their books. I listened to gotcha. every freaking podcast they had all day. And yep. um, really all I was doing is just, just stacking money and learning as much as I could um, mm -hmm. for the day where I felt like I had gotten rid of enough debt, um, you know, that I was personally comfortable participating in investment real estate. So um, that so was very long, long the answer. But, how yeah. long did that take you from when, okay, we'll, we'll go with from you got your first deal because we okay. know that was five months after. Um, yeah, 2018 so when, end, yeah. Yep, so until mm -hmm. you started like, okay, I'm gonna buy this house for a short-term rental. Okay, so the first investment thing I did, I did like live-in flips, like I'd buy them and fix them up. Okay. I did my first flip that I didn't live in. I think I, we closed on that in December of 2021. That was like a test run with my business partner who I do all my investment stuff with, Austin Cook, great guy. Okay. I should have him on here, he's awesome. Um, and then we bought our first home in Traverse City. Mm -hmm. I think we closed March 31st, 2022. So that was 10 months ago, almost exactly. Oh wow, I think. okay. Yep. And so obviously it's gone fast because now we have 20. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so March 31st, that person had 60 days occupancy. So we had to wait. We got occupancy, whatever, in March to April, April to May. So maybe June mm -hmm. 1st or something. We were up there, like, just doing stuff, like, building out the furniture. We saw a second one, like, in the su same subdivision go up for sale. We went there on our lunch break from building the furniture. Gave them a crappy offer. We got really lucky because it was an out-of-state investor from Florida who needed to 1031 she owned a single family house. It was a newer construction single family. And she's trying to get into a big commercial deal. So she needed her gotcha. cash quick. Yep. So she gets it. She didn't even counter. She just accepted our yep. offer in 2021 during all the crazy bid wars, 25 can under ask. We were like, what just happened, dude? So that was that. Shortly that after was, that. That was in the Traverse City area, you said, right? Yeah, both were in Traverse City. Oh Those my short -term God. Models. I was just learning all day. Honestly, legitimately, I was learning all this stuff that people were doing on TikTok. I was trying to watch people who were in short-term rental space and piece together yeah. the software they used because I know I'm, I'm very active in real estate sales. And I thought, there's no way I can add another job to my life. I'm still thinking I need to focus on what pays me. So I need yeah. as much software and systems in place to make this easier. So I just started like taking like, oh, I like this person's idea. I like this person's yeah. idea. 
me and Austin are bouncing off each other all day and we just basically cobbled together the system of software and programs we could buy to basically like run it for us.